Hey, this is Lisa Danforth from Lisa Danforth Coaching and Remote Working from Home. And today I am here with the always on point Paula Diaco from Write Stories Now. Paula is a book coach and a writing mentor. I have leaned into her expertise and services and I can tell you she is absolutely phenomenal. Paula works with predominantly solopreneurs, people who are looking to write a nonfiction book. And we're just going to jump right in and sort of, there are many of us now that have a little extra time on our hands. Some people don't, but they might want a little bit of a distraction and they want to lean into doing some more writing and start that book that's been kind of, as Paula says, tapping them on the shoulder. So I'm going to jump right in with one question to, to, to start us right off. And Paula, why write a book now? Well, you gave an excellent list of them, Lisa. I mean, people are home. Right, they're working from home, they're working remotely, they're adjusting their daily schedules, and they're finding that that book is really tapping them on the shoulder because inside they know, in their head, they know that this is probably a good time to start it or to start the um, manuscript that they have on their hard drive that's been sitting there waiting for them. Um, also, if they're solo entrepreneurs, which is the group of people that I work with, solo professionals, they can start looking at strategies for post pandemic, I'm calling it. You know, mm -hmm. where are they going to be? If they abandon everything they've been doing content wise, writing content, blog posts, um, the articles, personal essays, all those things, then they're gonna be at a real disadvantage when this is all over and just know that this too shall pass. This is hard, it's super hard, but this too shall pass. So if they can keep their head in the game of writing, that's a really good thing. And writing a book is awesome. So when this is all over, they have something to publish. But then they need to first do something, which is the foundational work. Would you like to know more about that? Would love to know more about the foundational work because that's, I mean, that's so important. Yeah, it really is. So basically they may have an idea for a book, but they don't really have a topic. So an idea or a topic rather is an idea that has been really defined and refined and it is related directly to the audience, an audience of people who are going to want to buy your book and read it, right? So you have to have them match up really well. So you're thinking of a topic, you also have to think of it in terms of your audience. So you've got those things, that's awesome. You're really excited and you're bubbly bubbling up because of 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 that mm -hmm. but you don't know where to start so have a table of contents you know your topic sit down brainstorm what the table of contents would be so it is a roadmap for you to uh start writing you don't have to start writing chapter one then chapter two then chapter three to the end pick the ones you want to write uh, first, right then, they're sort of the low-hanging fruit, and then go back and do the other chapters. Oh, that's nice. I love the simplicity of it. I know there's a lot more to it, but to have that that sort of roadmap, that GPS of, okay, yeah, exactly. here's where we are, here's where we want to go, and you're able to map that out. So what are some of the ways that people can get started today? So if they are really wanting to do this and yet they're finding themselves in a state of resistance like where do i begin which chapter should i start um they can um find a writing buddy because there's more than just you out there who wants to write a book find somebody that you can just do a quick check-in hi i'm going to work on chapter one and two today see you in an hour check back in report how well you did having that accountability and also knowing someone else is doing it along with you is really helpful. You can also um, use something called the Pomodoro method, which is you're on your own, but you set a timer for, what is it, 75 minutes. Um, you do the work, you're all in 100%, you've got no distractions of social media and you get the work done and then the timer goes off and you take a 15 minute break and you do a couple of those and you can get an amazing amount of writing done when you're all in and focused. Uh, you can also look at your book, not in its entirety. So you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have 40,000 words to write for this self-published book. If it's a self-published book, that sounds like a lot of words. It's not really, it's very doable. And it's especially doable if you concentrate on 500 words at a time. Just sit down, 
write 500 words, see how long that took you, and make that amount of time available a couple of days a week. Put it on your calendar. Achieve 500 words at a sitting. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. 500 words three times a week, 1,500 words times four weeks a month is 6,000 words times 10 months is 60,000 words. If I did the math correctly, it's 60,000 words. That's a lot of words. That is called a book length manuscript. That's how you do it. 500 words at a time. If for some reason you're balking at sitting and typing 500 words and you are a very verbal sort of person, get out your smartphone, use your app that dictates um, your, you know, records and transcribes or dictates, I guess is the right word, as you are talking. I think it, it provides you text files, send it, email it to yourself, and then you can edit it. Um, I know I have a couple of clients who are much looser and freer and tap the creativity better through talking. And that is legitimate way to write a book. Absolutely legitimate way to write a book and easier for you and you'll get it done and it'll be fun. This has to be fun, right? Mm. So true. So true. You had given me that tip when I started working with you, gosh, a couple of years ago, and it really helped me. I'm much more verbal like so much more verbal. So it just made it much easier. I dictated it into the phone, it transcribed it, and then I could literally hit a little button and it would forward it to my computer. I save it in a file and it's all written. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask you one more question, if you don't mind. For those who really want to sit and write, but they've got this sort of block and then, you know, what is a recommendation that you might have? Are you one of those that says, just keep your pen to the paper and be like, I don't know what to write. Is it, can you give someone who really wants to do it? But is, because I find once you get started, right? If you're in two, two, three, five minutes and things start to flow, can you just give a yeah. tip or tool for someone to lean into? Yeah, that actually is a good idea. It's just to sit and write, but don't sit, don't start with the chapter of your book or the content of your book write a letter to someone. Sit and write a letter to someone. Tell them about your current state of mind or what is going on. That will loosen you up to writing. It's very easy to write a, a letter to someone. It's casual, it's, it's, it, but yet it engages your creativity and it also gets you into a state, an emotional state, which is very helpful when you're writing that you love what you're writing. When you're writing a letter to a loved one, that's a great emotional state to be in. And often then you can shift over to the content of your book very easily after you write the letter. I love and that. It's a little trick of the mind and we have to trick our mind sometimes. We're, we think we're so smart and yet we have these funny little resistances and then other little tricks like that can actually push us through the resistance into a state of writing bliss. And right. it is writing, there is such a thing as writing bliss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you into writing bliss. You, you are, write. I know, I know. I'm getting I better. <laughs> I think it's more of the talking bliss and it just sort There you of, go. Same thing. But it's, I mean, that, I can't, I cannot stress how helpful that was for me because to sit and write, I have, I'm a bad writer and that's a belief in my head and we live into who we believe we are, right? But as I've been using the audio, as I've been recording it, I feel more like a writer. So then it's making it a little bit easier to sit down and type or, or write it on, on paper if that's what you want, sort of that old fashioned feel. I know one yeah. or two of my clients love just the paper and pen. Like they actually like the sound of yeah. it. Right. And that is fine as well. Absolutely. In fact, I just had somebody yesterday say, I don't know, because I'm running a writing program this next week. And she said, I don't know, I'm going to be writing in my journal. And, I'm, and it, it always takes me sort of like a second to realize that someone thinks that's lesser than. And it, mm -hmm. it absolutely is not. It's fine. You absolutely can write in a journal or a notebook. Right. It's, it's writing. It's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paula, so much for sharing all of your years of expertise. And if someone wanted to reach out and learn a little bit more about what you do, some of your different offerings, where can they get in touch with you? Sure. So they can get, uh, they can send me an email, Paula at Write Stories Now. It's W R I T E stories with an S now.com. Uh, and they, or they can go to my business page and, on Facebook and send me a direct message. Either way, it's great. Perfect.
Thank you so much. If you found this helpful, please comment below. Please share with someone that you think would benefit or, or would really love to start doing some writing. One of your friends that has been expressing that. Please share this video with them or invite them to the group. It is all about a culture of caring, supporting each other during this incredibly tumultuous time to doing, be doing some things that make us feel good, but also are very proactive in what we want to create in our life. So Paula, thank you so much. I am so grateful you took the time to chat with me today and we will see you around town.